Hey there, whether you're thinking of buying an Osmo Pocket 3 or you've already got one and you're struggling with a few things, these seven limitations are something you really need to know about. Like limitation number one, and that's that there's no zebras or histogram built in to the Osmo Pocket 3. So I've just set up this kind of crazy snorry rig for my Osmo Pocket 3 just so you can see what's happening on the screen. And you can see that none of these options actually give us any way of getting a histogram or zebras turning on. Even if you turn on pro mode here and go into exposure, there is a way to get zebras for your image on your Osmo Pocket 3, but to do that, you have to connect it to the DJI Mimo app, and then you can use the app to turn on and turn off zebras and also get a histogram. But there's no way to do it in the built-in screen in the Pocket 3. The second limitation that you really need to know about is that the Osmo Pocket 3 doesn't have any manual focus capability. We get three focus modes. One is continuous focus mode. So while you're recording video, it's gonna shift the focus to whatever it thinks is the subject. The second focus mode is single shot or single time focus. You tap on the screen and then it focuses on that point and then doesn't change. We also have product showcase mode, which is a focus mode that will quickly switch focus to whatever you hold up in front of the camera or closest to the camera. And I wanna show you an example here. So I'm gonna to grab this book so say we wanted to do a kind of a reveal move left here and then reveal this color card in focus so I can tap on it and it's going to focus that and then I'll get to my starting position but notice that it's focused automatically on this book so as I do the reveal the card kind of is not in focus and it will then do an autofocus move, which is gonna look pretty terrible. What we actually need to do is stop recording and then swipe from the right, make sure you're in pro mode, come down here and tap on focus mode and then change this to single, hit confirm. And then what we can do is we can tap on the thing that we want to be in focus, which is that color card. Now watch what happens when I slide across. It's not automatically autofocusing on this book. And as we slide past that book, you can see that the color card is already in focus. We don't have that snapping into focus, which looks pretty terrible. All right, limitation number three is related to audio, and that's that there's no headphone audio output jack on the Osmo Pocket 3. So if you're filming and you wanna be monitoring those audio levels, you can't do it straight out of the box. DJI does state in their manual that you can change the output monitoring volume in one of the settings. I'm assuming it's by way of using some kind of USB-C to headphone output dongle. However, one of the benefits of the new DJI Mic 2 that you can get if you get the Creator Bundle is that this new wireless microphone can actually record 32-bit flow internally. So that's potentially gonna help you out and mean that you don't get overloaded audio levels if you're willing to go the extra step and use 32-bit flow audio. All right, limitation number four is that you need to be aware of the limitations in certain combinations of frame rates or resolutions. The first limitation is when it comes to slow motion. So I'm gonna tap at the bottom left here and I'm gonna switch across to slow motion mode. And then if I swipe up from the bottom in 1080p, we can do 120 frames per second slow motion and also 240 frames a second slow motion. But if we head to 2.7K resolution, we only get 120 frames a second. And if we head up to 4K, you can only choose between 100 frames a second or 120 frames a second. Another thing that you need to know about when using these slow motion modes in particular is that the video file that actually gets saved is not registered as 120 frames per second. It's already slowed down for you. So when you bring it into your editing software, you don't have to change the playback speed. It'll play back in that slow motion speed. Also, the video file that gets saved is actually 30p or 29.97. So don't be surprised if you're editing with these slow motion files and you're wondering why it actually says 30p in the metadata for the video files. Another thing you need to be aware of with these slow motion modes is that they don't record audio into the video file. They do, however, record a separate audio file next to the video file on the SD card that you can use if you want to get access to the audio that goes along with that slow motion video. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to tap on the bottom left and we're going to go back into regular video mode. Swipe up from the bottom. The good thing is, regardless of this resolution that you're shooting at in non-slow-mo mode or normal video mode, whether it's 1080, 2.7 or 4K, you get access to these entire range of frame rates from 24 frames a second, 25, 30, 48, 50, and 60. So it's nice to have that flexibility regardless of the resolution that you're recording in. Also, if you're using 60 frames a second in normal video mode, when it actually records that video to the SD file, it's correctly tagged as 60 frames a second. So then you have the option of slowing it down in your video editing software if you want to get a 60 frames a second slow motion effect. Another limitation when it comes to these video modes 
I'm just going to switch across to low light mode and swipe up from the bottom and notice it, whether it's 1080 or 4K we only have access to 24, 25 or 30 frames a second if we're using that low light video mode. Let's switch across to hyperlapse mode and here regardless if you're shooting a hyperlapse, a time lapse or a motion lapse, it's up at the top right here. You can see that we only get to choose either 25 or 30 frames a second as the frame rate and that's regardless of which resolution we actually select. Moving on to limitation number five, and it's an obvious one, but just be aware that the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 has a fixed aperture in the camera of 2.0. What that means is if the overall scene is really bright, then you're not gonna be able to stop down the aperture to let less light in and control the exposure. So for example, if you're shooting in a really bright scene and you've changed the ISO to the minimum ISO and it's still too bright, then you're gonna have to increase the shutter speed to compensate for that brightness and the fixed aperture to get the correct exposure be aware that if you do that then you're going to lose potentially that natural filmic or cinematic motion blur that comes along with using the correct shutter speed for the correct frame rate. Luckily there's a solution for this and that's to buy some ND filters that you just fit on the front of the camera so you can control the shutter speed however you want. And moving on to limitation number six is that you can't pre-program gimbal moves in the Osmo Pocket 3 like you can do with some of the bigger gimbals such as the RS2 or RS3. For example in this scene in a short film that I did called Zero Likes what I did is I pre-programmed a gimbal movement in on a RS2 and then I went into frame and started playback of those keyframes to get this effect. because you can't pre-program gimbal moves in the Osmo Pocket 3 means you've got some limitations when it comes to filming yourself. Limitation number seven really annoys some people and that's that you have to activate your Osmo Pocket 3 before you can use it. You get five uses of the Pocket 3 that will still work and after the fifth use you're going to have to register or activate the product before you can continue using it. It's really easy to activate the Osmo Pocket 3 but you have to use the DJI Mimo app to do it and to do that you need to log in which means creating a DJI account. So given these limitations is it even worth buying an Osmo Pocket 3? I think that depends on what you want to use it for. Like anything, you need the right tool for the right job. If I just take it off of this crazy Snorri cam rig, it is still a nice compact gimbal camera to carry around with your pocket and this has got the extended battery grip on so if I take this off it's going to get even shorter and this also has benefits over just using your phone because it has the gimbal that means it can use gimbal stabilization rather than digital stabilization and that means as long as you've got something like an ND filter you're going to be able to get lovely cinematic filmic motion blur and also stabilized footage stabilized physically with the gimbal to find out more about the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 check out this video next I'm Jason Roberts and please subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video.